Hey everyone, this is Scott Siemens. Welcome to lesson number one. We'll be uh, setting up our local testing environment. We'll be talking about file structure and how you can um, rapidly develop a file structure for your website really quickly. Um, we'll also be defining our site within Dreamweaver so that we can use it in the future tutorials and work with our database automatically. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. If you're on a Mac computer, um, by default, any computer can't process PHP. It needs a server installed on it to do so. Um, so if you're on a Mac, you're going to need MAMP. And if you're on Windows, you're going to want WAMP. So let's go ahead and Google WAMP. And uh, right here, WAMPserver.com, click the link. And within this page, you'll see another link down here, download the latest version. And you can click that, and then it'll, it'll probably ask you a few more options. Uh, click the link that with the appropriate operating system that suits your needs and it will download a zip file. Now for Mac users you don't want MAMP and it is MAMP.info and you'll click the link you'll see two options you'll see a professional version and the free version and the free version will serve all of our needs and purposes so just go ahead and click download that it is sort of a large file so it might take a few minutes to download. Um, after it downloads, it will download a zip also, or, or maybe a DMG, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a zip. But uh, go ahead and unzip both the, that file, if you're on Windows, unzip your file. And then um, double click the install icon, it should just say MAMP, and you can kind of tell which one it is. It's just like installing any other application. And uh, after that installs, um, we'll go ahead and we'll open it up. It will install it automatically to your applications folder on a Mac. It'll be on your programs folder um, if you're on Windows. So I'm double clicking it to open it up. It wants my password. It might not ask for yours. It's kind of touch and, touch and go on that. Uh, now, if it's working, it'll say, welcome to MAMP. If you can see this page, MAMP is installed on your Mac and everything is working. And so hopefully you're all seeing that page. A similar thing happens for Windows 2. Your Windows 1 might look a little different than this, but it's the same gist. Um, first thing you're gonna wanna look at is the host. And it should say localhost. You wanna look at your user and it should say root and password root and you'll need to remember these because this is how we will connect to our database for building our website um, so those are really important um, the other thing you want to do is click PHP my admin and within this screen you just want to make sure it loads up for now I will go in and show you how to use this but this will be the back end or the backbone basically for a content management system so it's really important that it's working properly so we can go ahead and close that and minimize this and you're going to want to set some preferences in here. Mine are already set, but I'll show you where to go to change yours. Um, you don't need to change anything under the first tab. Under ports, your ports are probably different. It's highly recommended that you set them to the defaults that they use for, say, your hosting web server provider. Um, you can just click the set to default Apache and MySQL ports, and it should set them automatically. If you don't have this button, I've heard some people don't have this button, uh, under Apache port, you want 80, and under MySQL port, you want 3306. Um, I'm not exactly sure. It should work without changing these, but like I said, they highly recommend that you change them. Under the PHP tab, you can change which version of PHP is running. We're going to want the latest version. Under the Apache tab, here's your document root. Yours is probably set to something different as well, maybe something like htdocs, and they bury that on in the file system. It's kind of hard to get to, and I just don't think it's a very good solution. So you can change where that's located at. Click the Select button, and, uh, well, first, create a new folder. I created a new folder on my desktop called localhost. It doesn't look like a folder, but it definitely is one. Um, so create a folder, name it whatever you want, you can put it in your documents if you'd rather, just whatever you think. And then inside of this folder, this is where we'll be keeping all of our websites to test our PHP on. If the website isn't in this folder, the PHP isn't going to be processed and your site's going to give you bad errors. Uh, all kinds of weird stuff can happen. So make sure that you're putting your websites in the folder that this is listed in the document route. Just click select, choose the folder you want, click open. So I'm going to cancel that. So hopefully your lights are green. They need to be green for both of them. And uh, hopefully everything's set up properly for you. Let's go ahead and minimize that. Now the next thing we need to do is define or I guess build our site structure. I'm using an app called Structure. It's a free download. You can find it. Um, let's just Google Structure uh, Net Tux. 
And there it is. It's the free Mac utility app uh, at net.tutsplus.com. Uh, I'll leave this link on the, uh, it'll be on learnnerd.com. It'll also be on the actual uh, vlog site itself. Um, just click download. It's free. There's an awesome video here to show you exactly how to use it. It goes really in depth. It shows you a lot more than what I'll be showing you, but I will be showing you the basic gist of how you can use it. So if you want to set your base path here, you can hit choose and then choose your local host or whatever folder you created. Um, you can also set it to always choose that folder like I have. You just type it in here and then hit close and it saves it. And Every time it pulls up, it'll have that in there by default. Now, whatever you type here, if this folder exists, whatever we type in down here will be put into that folder. If that folder doesn't exist, it will create it for us. So I that folder didn't exist on mine, so it will be creating it. And then this is the files that we want to put inside of that folder. We're going to want an index.php file, and then we're going to want some folders. We're going to want an uh, images folder. And to create a folder, you just type the name of the folder followed by a slash. We're going to want a CSS folder. And then inside of that CSS folder, we're going to want a style.css. So if you want to create a file within a folder, you put a slash before the folder you want to create it in. That makes sense. Um, we're also going to need a style.php. And this might be kind of weird. Uh, it is just a stat, like a cascading style sheet, um, just a normal CSS file. But I named it .php so that I could reference it and change it dynamically. Um, this gives the user options to change images, or you could even go in depth and do backgrounds and colors. We're not going to go that in depth, but I just wanted to show you kind of how you can do it. It's a cool concept. Uh, you can use Ajax technology to do that as well, and it's probably a better solution, but it's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Um, and the last thing we're going to need is a JavaScript folder, and inside of that we'll need a script.js. So this syntax works as well, where you just immediately follow the folder you're creating by a file you want inside. Either one works, uh, this one or this one. So I think that should be pretty good. Um, now, if you wanted to save this, if you use it all the time, just click Save Template. You can name it, keep them in here, and it'll just get you going every time you're ready to go. You can just open it up, click the template you want, hit Create, and you just created a whole site structure in a few seconds. And you can go really in-depth with this. You can even put, uh, under Templates here, you can even put um, HTML inside of these files with dynamically updating links so that you always have the latest version if you're like using a script from another site. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, you want to watch that tutorial if that's something you're interested in. So go ahead and click create and it doesn't look like anything happened but if we opened up localhost you can see here's SS vlog and inside of that there's our folders. There's our CSS, there's our PHP file, nothing in images because we didn't put anything in there, our index.php and our script.js. So it looks like it created everything for us perfectly. You can go ahead and close this now. Uh, go ahead and open up Dreamweaver and now it's time to define our site. So click site at the top and then click new site. I'm naming it SS blog. You can name yours whatever you want. Uh, here I'm just going to go ahead and type in. You're going to want to reference the folder that you just created with structure. I'm just going to type it in there, SS blog. Under servers we're going to want to add a new server. I'm going to call it localhost since that's what it is basically. Uh, under connect using local slash network because it is running on our machine locally. Under the server folder you're going to want to choose the file that we created as well. SS blog. Choose. Leave web URL blank. That's fine. Click the advanced tab and down here under testing server we're going to want PHP MySQL. Then click save. Uh, the last thing we need to do here is change this from a remote server to a testing server. I'm not sure why default it always chooses remote, but we want this to be a testing server. Uh, the last thing under advanced settings, if you want to, you can choose your images folder. Uh, this is the default images folder selection. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's a nice little feature that they offer for uh, Dreamweaver. Go ahead and click save. And now we have successfully defined our site. The last thing we're going to do here is make sure that our server really is working by trying out some PHP. So go ahead and open up this index.php file. Now make sure you're in code view. Um, 
My Dream Reaper might look a little different. I'm in classic mode and I've shrunk down this toolbar over here. Ooh, that's really big. Uh, yours probably isn't that big either, but um, I like to keep it small. Give me as much space to work as possible. So, like I said, make sure you're in code, vo code view. And now let's write our PHP. So PHP starts with the PHP tag just like that. And then you're going to want to make sure you end it with a tag like that. It's just a question mark and an arrow. And following the PHP, go ahead and give it a space echo. Echo will basically echo out anything that we type within these brackets. And we're going to go ahead and use an H1 tag, which is a heading tag. And we're going to tell it hello world. And then we're going to close out our heading tag and close out our quotes. And then we'll end the statement with the semicolon. So basically, we have our PHP echoing out this heading, hello world, and the semicolon tells the PHP processor that this is the end of the statement. You need to stop here and print out whatever's within that echo. Um, and then make sure you save it. So I went ahead, you can go file save or hit command S or I think it's control S on Windows. I get confused since I'm used to using a Mac. But um, so if that worked, it will um, show in Chrome here. A giant hello world. So on mine, I type in localhost since that's the folder I'm looking for, and it's on it's my root folder, uh, and then ss blog. Hello world. So it looks like everything's up and running on mine. Hopefully yours is working too. If you have any issues, there's tons of tutorials online. You can shoot me a message in the comments. I'd be more than happy to help you. So basically in this uh, video, you've learned how to install WAMP or MAMP, and you've learned a little bit about site structure and how to use an application called Structure to get you going up and faster, and you learned how to define your site in Dreamweaver. Uh, next time, We'll be doing uh, layout techniques, talking a little bit about um, a way to design our website. I'll be showing you the images that we'll be using for my website and how I designed them in Photoshop. And we'll be talking about image optimization. Uh, it's really important to keep file sizes as small as possible on the web for faster download times. Luckily, internet keeps getting faster and faster. It makes it a little easier on developers, but it's still important to take it into account whenever possible. So hopefully I'll catch you over in lesson number two.